All right, viewers, a couple of months ago I made a video about one-handed weapon reanimation mods for Fallout 4, and I think it's more than about time I finished off the list by talking about two-handed weapon reanimations. Yes, I know you're just itching to hear about this exciting topic. Okay, maybe not. But to be fair, you will learn a lot from watching this video, and I learned a lot by making it. I've looked at dozens of mods, so many in fact that I'm not even going to bother listing them on screen. Before I recommend any reanimation mods, I have to recommend a mod I wasn't even aware of until a few days ago called No Grabs or Kill Moves. You see, a lot of these reanimation mods have problems with gun bashing kill cams, especially when used alongside Tactical Reload. One thing I've learned in my testing that I wish I'd known earlier is that disabling blood and gore through the any files, which I've been doing thanks to YouTube's guidelines, exacerbates these bashing problems. With gore disabled, bashing kill cams won't work at all, the kill cam cancels right away. But with gore enabled, and don't worry YouTube, I've found new methods of censoring the mess, the kill cam will still cancel, but the enemy almost always dies anyway. It just looks like they're being telepathically killed. So kill cams are still broken, but not as broken as I thought they were. Regardless though, as far as I'm concerned, the best way to fix these broken kill moves is to remove them from the game entirely, since they add nothing to the experience, and can even get you killed because they lock you in place for a few seconds while they execute. And that's what the No Grabs or Kill Moves mod is for. I can wholeheartedly recommend it to anyone. Also, in the time since I made my one-handed weapon reanimation mod battle video, a new 10mm animation came out called 10mm Animation by Ronald... Ronald, I don't know how to pronounce the name. Anyways, their 10mm animation is the best 10mm animation set ever made for this game. The firing animation is great. You can see the recoil being compensated for by the immense bulk of the 10mm pistol. The reload is less stiff than War Daddy's version, and the sprint, grenade throw, and bash animations look better too. The mod does have some problems, of course, mainly caused by Tactical Reload. In Power Armor, Tactically Reloading is broken, but that's equally an issue with War Daddy's animations. Tactical Reload also breaks bashing kill moves, but again, this is not a problem if you don't use Tactical Reload. If you do use Tactical Reload, and plan on using Power Armor, stick with vanilla animations. By the way, unlike War Daddy's mod, Ronald's set doesn't feature new third-person animations, but I don't think it's that big of a loss considering how uninteresting War Daddy's third-person 10mm animations are. Anyways, holy fuck, it's been three minutes and I still haven't recommended a single two-handed weapon reanimation. I need to get a move on. Okay, for a lot of weapons like the Missile Launcher, Gatling Laser, and Minigun, the recommendation is easy. There aren't any reanimation mods for them at all. Nobody gives a shit about heavy weapons or melee weapons, and therefore there are no mods available to improve their animations. At least, nothing worth discussing. The Assault Rifle only has one reanimation mod, and it's incredible. Assault Rifle Reanimated is so good, it almost makes me want to use this bulky piece of crap weapon, and that's the highest praise I can heap onto this mod. Unless you're using an Assault Rifle Replacer already, definitely get this mod. The Combat Rifle and Combat Shotgun share animations because Bethesda is lazy, and there's a lot of choices for reanimating these two weapons. War Daddy's Combat Rifle animation will likely be preferred by most people, and has more compatibility with modded or Creation Club weapons that use the same animations as the Combat Rifle. As long as you download another mod to fix the misaligned sights, this one is a winner. As for myself, I like Ronald's combat rifle animation better, but I don't think everyone will appreciate the exaggerated visual recoil it has. That seems to be a sticking point for a lot of people, but you really can't go wrong with either of these mods. For the laser gun, which can be modified into either a rifle or pistol, the best choice is the mod Laser Rifle Reanimation. It sticks very close to the vanilla style while being a straight upgrade in every single way. This one is a no-brainer. By the way, this mod also improves Institute weapons as well, because they share animations with laser guns, because Bethesda is fucking lazy. For the Plasma Gun, there's only one reanimation out there, the Vanilla Reanimation Project Plasma Gun mod by Ronald. And it has an obvious problem. The draw and holster animations are cut off, so the weapon appears and disappears out of nowhere, and it's impossible to miss. 
I've also read that the ESL file it uses to enable tactical reload support causes save game corruption. So if you're using tactical reload or you're bothered by that animation issue, it's best to stick with vanilla plasma gun animations. For pipe guns, there's only one mod available, once again part of Ronald's vanilla reanimation project, and it has quite a few problems. Some weapons disappear too early when you holster them, some sounds are either missing or play too late like the pipe revolver's hammer, and the iron sights are misaligned. Many won't like the exaggerated recoil either, so this mod is difficult to recommend despite being the only option available for pipe weapons. I have to commend Ronald for animating weapons no one else bothered to, but I wish he'd come back and fix some of the issues his mods have with an update. Anyways, for the handmade rifle, get the right-handed Nuka World AK Replacer, unless you have custom weapons that use handmade rifle animations and they absolutely depend on the original left-handed charging handle position. If you have mods like that, it would be best to stick with the vanilla animations. For the hunting rifle, the Battlefield 1 hunting rifle animations are absolutely the best. Hitman's animations are okay, but they add too much firing delay in between shots, making the hunting rifle even harder to use than normal. The disadvantage of the Battlefield 1 mod is there's no third-person animations, so NPCs or your character in third-person will pull on the wrong side of the weapon. However, it is possible to load the Battlefield 1 hunting rifle animations after Hitman's animations, so you can get the third-person animations from Hitman and first-person animations from Zest of Lemon. That way you'll have the best of both worlds. The submachine gun is such an ugly weapon, you're better off finding a replacer that turns it into a proper Tommy gun because there aren't any good reanimations for this thing. Grab the Damn Mag is still a useful mod for making custom weapons that use submachine gun animations look better, but it doesn't look great on the submachine gun itself. For Far Harbor's lever action rifle, the best mod is definitely Haru's lever action reanimation pack, in particular the Haru lever action animations, not the Daya edited ones since they have the best looking bullet counted reload support, with only a minimal amount of interpolation fuckery during the transition between reload and idle. Hitman's right handed lever action animations are also an okay choice, but they have more interpolation problems with bullet counted reload. Only use Hitman's animations if you're insistent on the idea that the lever action rifle must be loaded from the right. For the double barrel shotgun, without a doubt, hands down, the Battlefield 1 animation is the best choice out there. It even has unique animations for the sawed off variant of the weapon. The other double barrel animations are too slow and make the weapon even less viable than it is in vanilla, so definitely get the Battlefield 1 pack instead, it's an easy choice to make. That's all the animations I'm recommending today. Now let's begin the arduous task of examining each of these mods one by one. I'll try to make it quick and painless. First up we have Assault Rifle Reanimated. By default this mod requires Tactical Reload, but there is a No Tactical Reload ESP available. If you want to use Tactical Reload, you need to either not be using the Tactical Reload Vanilla Weapons mod, or load its ESP before this mod's ESP. If you set up your load order incorrectly, tactically reloading with this weapon will be broken, and load order issues like this are yet another reason not to use tactical reload. Another tactical reload issue is the telekinetic bash kill cams. This problem is so unbelievably common with tactical reload that I won't even mention it anymore, because I would have to repeat myself over a dozen times. Just assume that every single mod supporting Tactical Reload has this problem, unless I specifically point out that it doesn't. Anyhow, the actual quality of the animations is incredible. They're just as weighty as you'd expect for a weapon of this bulk. I love how you actually make use of the carry handle to holster and unholster the weapon. The grenade throw animation is awesome too, it looks like it's straight out of the new Modern Warfare games. Besides my gripes with Tactical Reload, I struggle to find anything negative to say about this mod. It's so good, it might make you think twice about replacing the assault rifle with a fancy M4 like I know you normally do. Next we've got four different combat rifle animation sets. First we've got my recommended mod, War Daddy's Combat Rifle Animations. This mod doesn't come natively with Tactical Reload support, but the Tactical Reload Vanilla Weapons mod works fine with these animations, and in fact lists them as a soft requirement. Like most of War Daddy's reanimation mods, this set sticks very close to the vanilla game, while being a lot less stiff. Thus, it's easy to recommend, as long as you use the mod linked in the description to fix the iron sights being slightly misaligned. Aside from that, there's nothing negative to say about this mod, it's a great option. 
Second of the combat rifle sets is Chad 509's combat rifle reload animation. This isn't a full animation set since only the reload animations have been changed. They're now done in a very slow, bouncy style that I'm not a fan of. There's no tactical reload support, and there's a lot of clipping with the drum magazine attachment. I have nothing else to say about this mod, it's obviously a terrible option. Third, we have the right-handed combat rifle and shotgun mod. This mod edits the meshes for both weapons to move the bolts onto the right-hand side. Unfortunately, the new animations this mod adds are really ugly. The hand poses are awful, and there's a lot of clipping. It also doesn't look right in third person because the third person animations for these weapons haven't been changed. So now you grab an invisible bolt on the wrong side of the weapon. To top it all off, there's no tactical reload support either. This is another bad option unless you absolutely demand these fictional weapons be right-handed for no real reason. The last of the combat rifle sets is Vanilla Reanimation Project Combat Rifle. There's tactical reload support available for this mod, but you need to also load the tactical reload vanilla weapons mod, or else you won't be tactically reloading with the combat rifle. As for actual animation quality, I think it's incredible. The combat rifle's new automatic hipfire animations truly reflect the insane spread the combat rifle has, unlike the vanilla animations. In general, these animations are very lackadaisical, like your character is just having a lot of fun shooting people. The grenade, sprint, and melee bash animations look better than War Daddy's animations too, as far as I'm concerned. Although there's a slight stutter in the sprint animation, which is hard to ignore once you've noticed it. Although War Daddy's mod is what I recommended, this animation set is pretty damn good too. Use either one, and you'll have a good time. Moving on to the laser gun, there's two mods that change its animation. First, we've got Laser Rifle Reanimation by the same guy who made the Assault Rifle Reanimation mod, so you know this one is good. It sticks pretty close to Vanilla Fallout 4's animation style, but it's smoother and has a little more bounce, more pizzazz, as they say in Italy. The sounds are better than Vanilla too, and I love that grenade throwing animation. The only minor downside of this mod is there's no tactical reload support for it, but I don't think laser weapons really need tactical reload anyways. There's even a version of this mod that makes you wield laser pistols in one hand, which makes our next mod completely redundant. Speaking of, the mod reanimated laser pistols is complete trash, and there's no nice way of saying it. This mod makes vanilla Fallout 4's animations look like the new Modern Warfare games. Horrible hand positioning, clipping, and inconsistent motion plague this mod. Just on a functional level, the animations are very zoomed out, and it's difficult to aim when using them. A slow motion look at these animations is the best argument against them, so I'll end off with that, since I don't want to criticize somebody's first attempt at animation too harshly. Next, let's move on to the only Plasma Gun reanimation mod out there, the Vanilla Reanimation Project Plasma Gun. I already spoke about this mod's issues in my recommendation section, so I have little else to say. This mod's tactical reload plugin will likely brick your save game, and the holster animation gets cut off way too early, which would be even more of an issue at a higher FOV. Otherwise, this is a pretty fun animation set. I like how tactically reloading is slower than emptying the whole cartridge. That's very unique. I want to be able to recommend this mod, but I cannot until it's fixed. There's also only one pipe gun reanimation mod in existence, Vanilla Reanimation Project Pipe Guns. It's the same story. I want to be able to recommend it, but it has too many problems. Some weapons disappear too early when you holster them. Some sounds are either missing or play too late, like the pipe revolver's hammer. Also, if you're using Tactical Reload, you need to load this mod's Tactical Reload ESP after the Tactical Reload Vanilla Weapons mod ESP, or this mod's support for bullet counted reload will break, and there will be a weird firing delay when shooting bolt action pipe weapons. I noticed a lot of people in the Nexus comment section had these problems and blamed the mod, but no, it's just a load order issue. In any case, despite this being a fun, bouncy animation set, it has too many problems for me to recommend right now. Coming up next, we've got a few handmade rifle animations, but there really isn't much choice here. First, we've got Chad 509's Nuka World Handmade Rifle Animation. Like Chad 509's other mods, this one only changes the handmade rifle's reload animation, 
and makes it very bouncy and slow. There's not much to say about this one, it's not very good compared to our next mod, the right-handed Nuka World AK Replacer. If you were annoyed by the charging handle being on the wrong side of the handmade rifle, this mod is the answer to your prayers, since it flips the charging handle and gives you an awesome new animation set to boot. It even changes the third-person animations to be right-handed, although obviously not in power armor. The new sounds are awesome too, you can even hear the echo from the recoil spring bouncing forward. This mod doesn't have native tactical reload support, but another modder has added it, and surprisingly this is one of the very few weapons that doesn't seem to have any broken bash problems when you use tactical reload. It makes you wonder what all these other mods are doing wrong. Anyways, whether you use tactical reload or you're smart and you don't, you're gonna have a great time with this mod, guaranteed. Our last handmade rifle animation, handmade rifle tactical sprint animations, makes a great companion to our last mod. It gives you a Modern Warfare style sprint animation that looks really nice. It's compatible with vanilla animations too, if you don't want to use the right-handed Nuka World AK replacer for whatever reason. Nothing more needs to be said, this is a great mod, it's compatible with everything. Sadly, we're not done yet, there's five different hunting rifle reanimations to look at. First is the Vanilla Reanimation Project Hunting Rifle. This reanimation keeps the hunting rifle left-handed, and that's guaranteed to be a turnoff for a lot of people. The animations, though, aren't that bad. There's a weird interpolation issue with the sprint animation, and tons of clipping during the iron sights firing animation. And maybe the reload is too fast, but overall these animations are okay. Interestingly, this mod has the telekinetic kill move problem whether you use tactical reload or not, so that sucks. If this was the only hunting rifle reanimation available, it would be worth getting, but there are better options. Second, we have the right-handed hunting rifle mod. I believe this was the first mod ever to make the hunting rifle properly right-handed, and it hasn't aged so well. It comes with a foam mod that lets you choose whether to add new right-handed receivers to the hunting rifle, or completely replace the original left-handed weapon. It doesn't matter what you choose, since you shouldn't download this mod. Its animations are ugly and jittery. They remind me of Fallout 3's animations, and that's not a compliment. I appreciate that the mod author added right-handed third-person animations too, but they likewise look like crap. We can do a lot better than this. Third, we have Hunting Rifle Animation Replacer. This mod's animations are a lot better than the first two mods we covered. If the Battlefield 1 animation didn't exist, I'd say this mod would be the winner since it corrects the bolt handle's position and delivers us some smooth animations. Unfortunately, the rebolting animation is way too slow, making the hunting rifle less useful than it is in vanilla. I love this mod's third-person animations, though. It's worth installing just for them alone. Next up, we've got another mod called Right-Handed Hunting Rifle. This one is by War Daddy, and it's not to be confused with the earlier mod of the same name. I kind of have a soft spot for these animations, they remind me of Far Cry 2. Some of the animations like the bash are obviously phoned in though, and unfortunately there's a ridiculously long firing delay in between shots when using this animation set, making it pretty much unusable. There's also no support for tactical reload if you care about that, so this is not a great option, sadly. Lastly, we have the Battlefield 1 hunting rifle. These animations are excellent, especially the sprint. You know I love that progressive sprint animation. Unlike the other hunting rifle animation replacers, this one comes with some fast firing animations. They're even faster than vanilla, which helps a lot to make this weapon more useful and fun. The only problem is an unfortunate lack of third person animations, which is why I'd recommend loading Hitman's hunting rifle animation replacer first, then these animations. Yeah, you'll have different sounds and different animation timings in first and third person, but who cares, that's fine. The first of our four submachine gun reanimations today is Submachine Gun First Animation Adjust. This mod is literally the exact same as our next mod, Grab the Damn Mag, except with an adjustment to the idle position. Since the mod author forgot to update the locomotion animations for power armor, this mod looks broken in power armor. As you can see, this mod is really not worth using, so let's move on. Next, we've got the classic mod that first animation adjust was based off of, Grab the Damn Mag. If you're using modded weapons that reuse submachine gun animations, Grab the Damn Mag is a lifesaver. It really helps make them look bearable. 
but today there are so many high quality weapon mods with custom animations that I really don't see any reason to use Grab the Damn Mag anymore. Next up is Right Handed Submachine Gun, which flips the charging handle on the submachine gun over to the right side and gives us a decent looking new animation set. Of course, giving a model that looks like it's from Toys R Us new animations is like putting lipstick on a pig. It's best to replace the submachine gun entirely as far as I'm concerned, but I suppose if you're constrained on disk space like Xbox users are, this could be an okay choice. It will make other weapons that use submachine gun animations look completely broken, however, so be careful. Last and least, we have the Submachine Gun Reload from the Fallout 4 Weapon Reanimation mod. This mod came out only a few months after the game did, back when people didn't really know how to make custom animations properly. This mod feels like more of a test than anything. It has desynchronized sounds and doesn't look any better than vanilla animations. There's no reason to use it, especially nowadays. We're getting through this, almost in the home stretch. There's only two lever action rifle reanimations, the first being right handed Far Harbor lever action replacer. To start with, this mod has no support for bullet counted reload, but thankfully other modders have come to the rescue to add it, otherwise, this mod would be completely useless. The interpolation when using BCR is pretty bad though, and I'm not all that hung up on the lever action rifle being left handed anyways. If you insist the lever action rifle be right handed, get this mod and get the BCR patch for it. Otherwise, our next mod, Haru's Lever Action Reanimation Pack, might be a better choice for you. There's five different versions of this mod. After testing them all, I found that the Haru Lever Action Anims look the best, with very minimal BCR interpolation problems. These reload animations are a bit slower than vanilla, and if you don't like that, maybe you should stick with vanilla lever action rifle animations and just use BCR, since vanilla animations also don't have that many interpolation problems. Let's cap off this video by talking about double barrel shotgun reanimations. BF1 double barrel shotgun is absolutely the best. It is so much fun to run around blasting enemies with the sawed off when you have this mod. The sprinting animations are great, the reloads are fast and snappy, the only thing that will make people think twice about this mod is the lack of tactical reload support. I never use tactical reload, so this doesn't bother me, but those who need tactical reload might like the vanilla reanimation project double barrel shotgun better. Personally, I'm not a fan of this animation set's exceptionally long reload. It's half a second longer than the vanilla reload. The double barrel shotgun already sucks. It didn't need a reload time nerf. And like some of Ronald's other animation sets, the shotgun appears and disappears out of nowhere during the draw and holster animations respectively. It's definitely not a bad set. I like the bash animation, I like the firing animations, but it just isn't as good as the Battlefield 1 mod. The last mod of this long ass video is Double Barrel Reload Animation Redone, and it's a stinker. This mod only changes the reload animation from vanilla, and the new reload is just as stiff as before. I like the new sounds, I guess, but this is nowhere near as good as the Battlefield 1 reanimation or even Ronald's vanilla reanimation project animation. This mod has tactical reload support, but tactical reloading is broken if you use the tactical reload vanilla weapons mod. Because other mods rely on tactical reload vanilla, this can put you in a catch-22 situation where this mod is incompatible with another animation mod. As far as I'm concerned, that's yet another reason not to use tactical reload and not to use this mod. Alright, finally this video is over. I had to restart Fallout 4 over 100 times to test out these mods and get enough footage. All for a subjective analysis video that will likely be outdated in a month, because someone's going to upload a super epic HD ultra reanimation pack to the Nexus that blows everything else out of the water. And this video will probably only get 900 views anyways, so was all my trouble even worth it in the end? Oh yeah, absolutely. Toodles everybody! Four patrons, folks. Count them. One, two, three, four. That's 12 cents a day. I'm greedily raking it in, penny by penny. Hell yeah.